What's the crack, lads? It is the Midnight Kid here, and welcome to episode two of the Pezcast. I'm joined by the beast, the special one himself, Lily. Not too sexy is what I call him, but um, yeah, it's it's going to be going on. Jelly, We're in jelly, the jelly, 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 jelly. <laughs> um, sorry, they're interrupted. Uh, but yeah, Lily and me are going to be just discussing Pez Day. It's not going to be that long of a Pezcast, uh, seeing as the last one was like an hour. We're going to try have it in between an hour and maybe forty-five minutes. Uh, depending on what we have to, to talk about. But just going to be giving our impressions. Obviously, Lily will have his thoughts as well. So, yeah, hope you enjoy it. What's up, Lil? Uh, yeah, when you said it's like 30 minutes to 45 minutes, I was thinking if I was going to go through Pez Day, it could easily go over an hour. But I will try to keep it sweet and short. Yeah, definitely, definitely. There was just so much, there was so much happening. Like, I was watching your video, obviously, on YouTube, and you were kind of saying the same as, as me, is that, like, it was kind of it was kind of easy or it would have been easy to get kind of caught up with the hype or maybe just kind of you know not be true to kind of ourselves and you know lick a bit of arse or whatever but i think we did a fairly good job of testing out things and you know giving feedback and stuff it wasn't just that we went in and we were delighted to be there you know what i mean yeah i think i think um it was it seppo's first time and to be fair seppo handled it really well he he looked yeah. really fresh he came there with like paper pen everything i was like you know i'm just gonna play the fucking game and do what yeah. I need to do. So was there, like he was ready to work. There was a few other people there that were there for the first time, and you could tell it was their first time. But I'm not going to drop any names or anything. I don't want to yeah. embarrass anyone or anything like that. But yeah, I can. Trust me, it's so easy. I remember when I went for Pez 15. Oh my god, I felt like I just needed like a box of tissues with me all day. Honestly, the the feeling of being there like that is is something unreal, man. Especially for your first yeah. time. That is, it's class. Like in fairness, like me and Seppo sat down. I think you were with you were with Berdinsky, weren't you? Playing most of the games, the first, I don't know, or who? Yeah, you think you were with Berdinsky, were you? For most of the yeah, just, the first just, five or six no, matches. No, just the first game. I think no, the first match or two. I think I was. With, I think it might have just been the first game because I gave him quite a spank in the first game. He decided he needed a break, and someone else came <laughs> by then. So yeah. Um, yeah, but lad. me and he's Seppo, like, li- he knows I'm joking. Yeah, I know he's. The good. beating he's was real, but he's a good lad. Yeah. The beating was real. You handed out a good couple of beatings, in fairness, yeah. We won't mention any names now, but I was one of them. But then I got you back with like a four nil. Yeah. So I was, I was buzzing with that. I was pezzed out by then. <laughs> I was pezzed out by. Then. <laughs> yeah, you were. You were just letting me win, yeah. I suppose. Nah, um, I'll tell you one thing. Do you know that game still haunts me? You know, I'm thinking, what could I have done differently? And do you know what? I didn't do any of the tactics like gen gen press and things like that. If I did that, when you, because you like a possession style game, if I did the gen gen press, I think that would have been a. Um, a different style but I think like like I said I was a bit pezzed out I wasn't thinking on how to contract you so I remember yeah. seeing you the wicked thing was I played you right on the start of the day then I played you right at the end and all them hours that you put in the game I could see the difference like made yeah. obviously you made the effort to learn the game in all that time so there is a quite a bit of a learning curve and obviously there's still a lot more to come from us yet especially saying that we only had four teams and limited formations and whatnot. yeah yeah but like that's what I was saying me and Seppo me and Seppo kind of for the first maybe I'd say about six or seven games we literally like went in to every mode or every menu every tactic everything and tried like I sat back with Atletico deep defensive line um, swarmed the box you know and played on the counter attacking and tried to kind of you know play like Atletico and you know you could see it working on the radar and stuff the minimap and stuff so we might start there I suppose in the actual advanced tactics because I know we've both given our impressions on the you know the gameplay, the passing, the shooting. Um, I suppose we can touch on that later if you want. But just on the advanced tactics, I mean, what were you? What kind of style did you start to start to develop while you were playing it? Like, because I did play you at the start, and then I think we played we played two or three matches kind of throughout the day, and then two or three at the end as well. So we did play a couple of games. But um, like, what what style are you going to try and go for when you when you when the game comes out, like online and stuff? Do you think? Um. That, I, I don't know it depends what sort of feel I get with certain teams so I'd like to play with teams like Liverpool but then it depends who they sign in the transfer market what players I have at my disposal if I'm going to play, play with a team that has obviously fast players then obviously you're going to want to play um, counter-attacking football sit deep hit them on the break because if you sit deep you create space to attack into so obviously that's uh, that's a very easy style to play if you're good at defending and in this Pez I think I can do that because defensively I think up until you I'm not going to mention that last game, but up until you scored a few <laughs> goals in one game, I rarely conceded more than one goal a game. And throughout the yeah. whole day, barring that last game, within like five, six hours of play, I must have conceded only five goals throughout the whole day. And one of them yeah. was against the guy, one of the stat developers. 
and he's been playing the game for months already and he was pretty solid at the game so yeah. it, you know playing a defensive style in this game can actually pay off because it's not a matter of look because I remember in PES 16 a lot of the time it felt like if you play defensively you'd have to ride your look because you know how that, that game plays with finesse shots and you know uh, mm. the refs being dodgy as fuck so in this game it actually like you can actually set out defensively and you can see a person's skill level because if someone's not good defensively they will get punished in this game yeah that's, that's a fact like I think when I was playing you just kind of and I was saying this in the write up I did on Pez Universe I was kind of saying that like in the first couple of games I played against you I kind of I kind of like I had I had a style where I was trying to go wide the whole time and stuff whereas then when I played you in the in the game that I did actually beat you I know I was I got two very very lucky go- lucky goals I mean you you passed on a bit of feedback to um the lads there like Asim and Adam and stuff showing him the goalie that was a big kind of a big mistake from Czech remember that one where he kind of hit his face off the free kick off the post um, yeah, and I got another kind of goal. Yeah, I, I mentioned well I didn't mention that exact incident but in my video I did mention a few things that the goalkeepers were yeah. a bit suspect on and they did take that yeah. feedback on so that was good of them like, they yeah. no they, bo- they did in there. fairness they, they were really, they? There, it wasn't like it wasn't a case of where we were just as I said like I mean <sighs> You know, we weren't we we were kind of like very vocal, and we were kind of saying things straight out. I mean, if we scored a good goal, we were saying "fuck," that was a, you know that was unreal. Or if there was, you know, kind of a mistake like that time with the goalie, um, you know, we were saying like that was that was kind of like something that needs to be you know looked at or whatever. Um, I remember 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 the one that we had where it was me, you, Berdinsky, I think, and it could have been Shogun, I'm not sure, and Seppo, and the four or five was were around the. Around the ball, and we were, or it was pirate, I think. Remember, when we were talking about how che- how Nair was after punching the ball with his kind of like stronger hand, even though he wasn't like, you know. And you were kind of arguing one way, and then we were arguing another way and stuff. So it was good. It was it was kind of good, but um, yeah. I just think as the day went on, I mean, I definitely kind of, I definitely kind of like changed my style up. I kind of went a bit more direct against you rather than kind of holding possession. Um, and I did get lucky a while. It was the same with Sep. I mean, Sep will kind of. Like he he kind of um, him and me had a lot of like nil all draws because I think we were both kind of cagey enough um, in testing things and testing the tactics. But when we actually had a few games, um, like I know that Sep was trying to actually play very very direct because he is probably you know the most direct um, player out of like me you and him I would say. As in he's used to play my club and he's you know he plays that style counter attack or whatever. And I just you don't think that plays the other one triangle yeah. Yeah, basically. No, I wouldn't I won't say that. Um, cuz he's actually he is actually a really good player like away from my club. Um but I think you just you're just not going to be able to do like this, you know, every cheap trick in PES 16. Now, I'm sure there will be a couple of other exploits from in PES 17 once the game is released. As in, you know, people will always find a fucking way to to get, you know, to get something out of um out of a game through exploits in every single game you make, but I do genuinely think that they have literally, you know, with PES 17, like, said a big fuck you to the long ball spammers, the ping pong passers. Um, I think people that are, like, very direct and used to, like, just passing from your centre half or your left or right midfielder uh, to your centre forward and turning and running on goal, I just don't think that'll work anymore, you know what I mean? Yeah, in the first game I played against Bardinsky, he was obviously into the habits of PES 16, so... A lot. I dominated that first match purely because he was trying to do, you know, just that blind pass forward, and that was just yeah. a bad habit from him. I know he's not that sort of player, but um, it's just a bad habit from Pest Sixteen, which I kicked out of my game pretty much within the first five ten minutes of the game. It took him yeah. like the whole match to get rid of that idea that it's just not going to work, and sometimes it's just becoming second nature to him to do it. So I played him again later on in the day, and his play style had changed, and um, he got that out of his game. So obviously it became more of a challenge to play against him and I realised one thing when I played you at the start of the day the tactic I did was almost flood the box so I was letting you go wide and then I was just making sure that I was winning headers in the box because if you yeah. obviously flood crosses in I was making sure that I was Atletico Madrid when I and I had got in and players like that just commanding that box and that tactic paid off for me because I, yeah. I think I only conceded in like one of the first few games that I played against you like conceded one goal or something and then obviously yeah. at the end of the day you mixed up your playstyle but I still didn't adapt to your playstyle that's why you had a lot more joy so yeah. if I adapted to it it might have been a different game so it does show that you know 
playing different styles actually does have a massive impact on how the game actually pans out where in PES 16 it all is <coughs> panned out the same way no matter what defensive lines you set no matter what team press or anything like that you did the games always panned out the same where our games were totally different the ones that we played in the morning and the ones that we played towards the end of the day not just to do with the learning curve of how much we learned but the, because of the play style set up the game was totally different man it was, it was amazing man I can't wait to see these sort of different tactics get played online like in my club in PES 16 all these managers have different like team press levels uh, count, uh, attacking the area central wide but then the games always play the same like it's the three ball over the top it's the one pass hit forward all that sort mm. of stuff in these games that i played i played against so many different guys and the games felt so different it was unbelievable it, I, it was just it was just amazing and that was from a demo which had limited uh, formations and whatnot so can you imagine how much more we're going to come up against when people have that freedom of formation yeah well I, a lot like I, I, a, I, a lot of people sorry man go on, yeah, no, go on. I, I was gonna say i think anyone that uses like abusive formations can easily get snuffed out so if you flood the box when a guy is attacking they're not going to get that much joy i think because people that shove 10 men up forward or like no well just say five men forward if you leave a three men on the break and the way this pass plays with the refs giving good free kicks and things like that and the passing being like sharp crisp with your own skill obviously it's not that easy to pass as well but i think people can get raped in this game easy if they use abusive formations i think so yeah. anyway no, you're right. I, I definitely, I definitely agree. Like, there's no the one, the one formation that I thought was a little bit overpowered, or the advanced tactics was the tiki taka, because you were basically like I played Sep in a couple of games with the tiki taka, and I was just literally, you know, every time that the ball broke down or I gave it away, like I was covered because like with the with like every kind of formation or every advanced tactic has the you know has a little description of what it is uh you know you've got your target man you've got your um obviously hug the touchline which is for wide players or whatever but like the tiki taka is kind of you just go around the pitch creating triangles like holding your zone and if you know if there's a gap somewhere you go in to fill that to collect the ball or whatever um i think that will be the big i think that will be the big one that people go for but, but to be honest but I actually think that um, I did play with someone else that did that towards the day and I think you did that towards you did that to me at the end of the day where I just didn't counteract it but I counter counteracted it against someone else I went gang yeah. gang press on them and then I switched from that to like tight marking and then sometimes I'd sit back because you have on the fly ones don't you so you don't have to pause the game do it and um, yeah. of, if you do it like on the fly sometimes people don't realise you've changed your tactics and what would happen is people that have that tick attacker because they have so many bodies going forward an uh, interception like in anywhere near the midfield and trust me you're in within a couple of passes but that's not an abusive style like the couple of passes in behind the back it's because when someone has tick attacker their team is so high up the pitch and their but like bodies are so high up the pitch as well that's when you're actually trying to go forward that is people can do it in defense but when they're going when they're trying to score um they are so exposed at the back it's unbelievable and uh it's just I think that it it might be abusive in someone being able to hold the ball, but when they lose that ball, they can be so exposed if someone else is set up right. Like if you're set up yeah. like Real Madrid with pace on the break or anything like that, trust me, that is I wouldn't call it abusive. I I, I think it leaves someone really exposed. So I wouldn't really to to be honest, I wouldn't recommend that tick attacker um, style to anyone unless they are exceptionally good at holding the ball up and dribbling in tight spaces, which I know you're good at pretty much both to be honest but it does leave you very exposed as well so uh, yeah but the thing i, I, wouldn't the, the call, thing I, I like I, I wouldn't for that reason alone i wouldn't call it abusive in that sense if someone else yeah. knows how to defend against it if, that goes with any tactic if, if anyone doesn't know how to defend against it then it's going to seem abusive but i think i looked at all the tactics attacking wise and defensively and i thought that tactic how could that be abused and then i thought how can it be counteracted sorry that's what i meant and then I looked yeah. at all the other ones I thought, right, that could be good for that one, that could be good for that one. And I was trying to look, is there one that could be like way too powerful for the rest? And then I thought, with the combinations of defensive line, attacking area, central, not central, sorry, um, all that sort of stuff anyway, um, all the combinations of that, nothing can, I, I wouldn't say that there's any tactic out there that is overpowering, as long as you just know how to set up against it. That's all it is. Yeah. Like, I just think it's a matter of knowing how to deal with stuff. Yeah, no, definitely. Like I, like I was playing the first couple of games I played. As I said, I was using kind of hug the line and attack and fullbacks. Um, whereas, so literally, I had kind of four wingers. Like when I was on the break, um, 
but you know like obviously if I was if I was setting up the best kind of my biggest takeaway from the tactics were that you can actually defend a lead if you have it you know what I mean like it doesn't it doesn't like there's there's going to be if they don't change anything between now and release day I can't see with the pace of the game and the way that you need to take a little touch before you before you you know go into a sprint um you know the way like it's not it's not like speed pez 16 style i think that there's just going to be no way that there's going to be like one killer pass that's so overpowered like true ball or the ping pong passing or whatever where you'll just be able to unlock a defense because to- like i literally was saying killer pass talking of that killer pass how many times do you actually play a first time killer pass into like a, a really good or not one where there's acres of space into but how many times where it was like a tight pass did you actually get that through because I think a lot of the time people weren't even attempting it because it got that hard but when you did get it through oh my god it felt so damn good yeah I didn't I realized people aren't so willing to play that through ball especially on the first touch play that through ball because I think people realize that passing isn't that easy and to do it on the first touch it, it almost requires requires a special player to do so it, that that itself controls the pace of the game and that's why I think my club in that sort of sense will take a big boost from it. I know online does play differently, but I'm just trying to think if they keep the fundamentals like that the same, then no matter what changes that happen to offline to online, I think the pace of the game in terms of realism should stay the same. Them sort of mm. key aspects should stay the same. No, the pace the pace is the best I've ever played in a, in a football game. Like it's, I know a lot of people, I mean, you know, some people are saying that like I've been, I was talking to a couple of people on the forums, and I gave my impressions or whatever, and they were saying like, oh, you know what I mean? It's obvious that you obviously saw the game in a, in you know the best light possible, you know, under control conditions or whatever. But I mean, I genuinely was trying to actually not break the gameplay, but I was trying to do things that I would consider you know breaking of the gameplay, like the true balls, Push the limits, and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. But like even with, I mean, I was playing you in one match. I think I think you were Arsenal. And I was at Let Go, and like I literally was getting absolutely destroyed because I had got so up front. Um, obviously, as you said, the the formations were locked. So like, I think um, or no, it wasn't Gatsu, was it? Or was it Gatsu? No, it was. I Torres, was playing. No, it? I was. Uh, no, oh, oh, yeah, it was Jim. Torres. Oh, no, it was Torres. Jim. I can't remember. Which yeah, one. it was Torres. Yeah, you're right. I was at Let Go, um, and I was playing at. I was playing like Torres up front and I literally just I didn't have the pace of Torres of old when he was like with Liverpool, obviously, but like. Mertesacker was absolutely just dominating me just pure strength like it was no speed and like Torres the minute he get the ball like I had to take a touch I had to decide whether to roll it out or try turn and dribble or whatever go wide or whatever but Mertesacker never really got cut out of cut out of shape you know and like you'd have to go back to like I think it was about Pez 2014 I'd say um, to actually see that you actually had to have kind of like a a good defender and a tall defender to win aerial battles rather than just having you know two fast defenders that would be like 80 explosive power or whatever and you could just you know because everything like I think there's going to be a big emphasis on actual physicality um, in it I mean like when I played with Arsenal a couple of times against Sepp and you like you were just like Ozil was just getting blown away like unless he got the ball in space like if it was any if there was any kind of physical contact at all like Ozil was just literally falling to pieces you know um but then again Ozil could do things that nobody else could do like such as the killer passes you're talking about and it felt you know really nice um the one thing the one thing I would say that was kind of before we move off the tactics the one thing I would say um is that like I love the way you can see on the mini map what exactly your opponent is doing because you know you can if you basically if you have if your opponent is finding space down the wings he's definitely playing like hug the line or attacking down the flanks with the fullbacks you know so it's not like you know the way sometimes in FIFA where like you go park the bus or ultra defensive or whatever it takes a couple of bit you know a couple of minutes to see exactly where players are positioning themselves like in this I think there's going to be a bit of brains behind it online where it's like right he's gone one up and I think some people will be like am I going to sit back or am I actually going to keep on the attack you know what I mean I think there's going to be a little bit of intelligence behind it which has been lacking from Pez I would say since since you know a couple of years back which is a big to me is a big thing you know it's kind of like are you going to fill your team with like you know big kind of strong uh, centre midfielders that will run all day for you such as the likes of 
you know, Witzel and I suppose Verratti, Matuidi, like in this year's game, or are you going to have that one player that kind of sits deep like De Rossi and then have an attacking midfielder like Ozil that can just, you know, carve out those chances, you know what I mean? So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I think, I think this year, shit, well, I mean, look, we're only going, I suppose, on the, on what we played. I mean, we, you know, hopefully they don't touch the pace or the, you know, anything. But I think that there will be a, a place in the team for the likes of them, you know, special players like Coutinho and stuff. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I, I it's just obviously we were limited with the formations and stuff, but I can see the way the game plays. I can see people using these lesser players more than they would in Pel sixteen because it's yeah. just. I think as long as you know you're good enough to use that player, you're not. You're not thinking that I need to use a superstar to beat a guy who's not good. But he's got superstars now. I think the game, in terms, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm struggling a bit to say what I want to exactly say. But I think the gap between being able to get the best out of a team is, um, I, I think, I think the gap between PES 16 and 17 to get the best out of Ronaldo has widened. I think you have to still be a better, you have to be a better player yourself to get the best yeah. out of someone like Ronaldo. Because you can't yeah. just think, right, I'm going to hit the ball to him and he's going to do his magic just by me holding sprint. That's it. No, you've still got to time the way you turn in now because defending in this game is a lot easier in the sense that it's not easy to tackle, but it just everything starts to make sense. Where in PES 16, things weren't making sense. So when you try to tackle someone and someone spins off in a different direction with unnatural movement, you're thinking, how the fuck is that possible? But now, because you can actually read things with the natural player movement it's easier to defend against it so mm. and they actually do make tackles where you are expecting them to make it so when you double tap x i remember in pes 16 they'd stick out the wrong foot or they tackle in the wrong direction i can't remember having that problem in pes 17 so it, everything just seems to make sense which makes it easier to defend against as well and the fact that dribbling is a lot harder now i think it's i think it's harder in the sense that there's a lot more weight to it. In, I'm not saying it's hard, but it's harder than it was in PES 16. Yeah. No, the dribbling, the dribbling is the best, the best I've ever seen it in a football game. Like that's one thing that, that's one thing that I would definitely say. Like the passing, I had a couple of issues with the passing from a, from a kind of like design aspect, I suppose. Like from immersion style, is that like a lot of the passes just kind of go in a straight flight and I know I said this to you a few times and I said it I was talking to Pirate about it as well for a while where it kind of the ball goes dead straight you know what I mean there's no kind of little curve on the ball Um, it just seems to be I remember when you said that to me and the moment you did it the guy played a foot uh played a pass with the outside of his foot and it yeah, kind of yeah, curved it was, into the guy's path but that yeah. was just like bad timing of you to say it to me but yeah, yeah. I, I, I but kind it, of know what you mean it, it's, it's not all the time like it's not like every pass is like that but it's not enough where you're thinking right use it inside of your foot and play it into the, like bend it into his path I know what you're saying that does happen but not enough yeah. I, I know what you mean I know what you mean like it, it takes I, I counted like 10 passes that I did and it was like 6 out of 10 that were literally just straight like you know what I mean so I mean obviously that's realistic but just kind of from a from an immersion style like if you're kind of getting the ball intercepted from a straight pass the whole time like it would be nice if they put kind of like every now and again if they put kind of like a little curl on the ball if the, you know because like in real life if you're doing that I mean like the genius of the players like Pirlo, Cruz, whoever like that that you know that you don't really see on a pitch unless you know football is like is the way as you said and I think you touched on in your video as well it's the way that the pass you know a a good pass is 50% from the person kicking it and 50% for when it lands at the foot you know is it into their strong foot is it into their weak foot you know is it on running do they have to stretch a leg out or whatever whereas I just think in PES 17 and PES 16 the last couple of years I just think that the ball is always on a perfect kind of you know sometimes I'd like to see them stretch out their foot um, a little bit more or kind of like you know take it in their stride or whatever you know um, but again that's only like that's really picking that's the only thing I have a problem with with the passing um, do you want to get on to talking about maybe the goalkeepers because I know that you had one or two issues with the keepers I I thought the keeper I kind of I saw the issue obviously I saw the, the little kind of the goal that Czech let in off the free kick where he hit his head or whatever um, that was just you know one mistake but like I thought I kind of disagreed with you on how the goalies were um, because I thought that the goalies were just 
amazing you know what I mean I thought that they were absolutely brilliant um, so what did you think are you kind of now that you've had time to kind of think about it a bit more and do your video on it or whatever do you think that the goalies still need a little bit of work or what yeah with the goalkeepers um, I felt that I, I I scored more goals than probably you especially in the first few games I saw you and uh, Pesep have quite a few nil nils where I scored I think like three and four here and there not that you know the other guy was bad I think some of the goalkeeping things I saw though were they made outstanding saves I said it in my video they positioned themselves well they did like nine nine times out of ten they did everything right yeah. the only real errors I saw with the goalkeepers were when the shots were close to them they were almost struggling to deal with them it's not they are much better than PES 16, by the way. I, I'm not. I'm not trying to say that it's not a step up. It is a massive step up from PES 16, and they do actually feel more natural. So when you actually take a shot, you can see the goalkeeper react to the shot, not the button press. Where in PES 16, you'd press the button and you can almost see the goalkeeper react to your button before the player actually hits the ball. Now it looks like the goalkeepers are waiting for the player to hit the ball, then dive. Where before in PES 16, it would be like that sometimes, but a lot of the time they're reacting to your button press. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I think the goalkeepers were rarely out of position. Only on crosses into the box that they would sometimes step forward. And that is, that's realistic as well. Sometimes goalkeepers step out of position and then get beat by a header on the near post. That is realistic. But then sometimes headers that were really close to their body that didn't have much power. I was thinking, how are you letting that in or making a meal of that? And then someone else taps it in. And then I'd see a super yeah. header get saved. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? Like... I'd like a bit more consistency in that sort of area. I think goalkeepers were struggling with shots that were a bit too close to their body. Not the ones that were like strong shots. I'm talking about the ones where the shot, you wouldn't expect it to necessarily go in because of the shot quality wasn't great, but yeah, like the goalkeeper just made a meal of it. Like you, They just didn't look like they knew how to deal with that shot. And that was my concern with the goalkeepers, that they were lacking that consistency where you expect them to make them saves. And the super saves... And, you know, coming out one-on-ones, things like that, they were actually pretty good. It's just where the basic, sometimes where you thought that's a bit basic, they were making the errors. Not all the time, just sometimes here and there. And that's where it really frustrated me because, like I said before in my video, you've seen them deal with it before, but then sometimes they didn't deal with it properly. And you're thinking, that's a basic save or a basic error you've made. So if it was like a super save that they didn't make, you think, okay, fair enough, he didn't react to it. But when it's something basic, it kind of got to me a bit, so... Yeah, that that was my only real issue with goalkeepers. Yeah, no, I like I do. I did obviously see some some little things with the goalies, but I don't think that it'll be a consistent kind of thing once they do a bit of testing. And obviously, they took all our feedback, and I think everyone, everyone, I think put down like a couple of goalies animations. Um, like one of the one of the goalie things that I actually was talking to, I think it was Graham. I could have been Toby. I'm not too sure, but it was one of them. Um, they kind of. The goalies were kind of like putting their hands out and then they were kind of going into a half dive but then staying on their feet. It was kind of like, it was it was kind of weird. It was like kind of like they'd, they'd go to dive but then they'd stay on their feet and catch the ball or whatever. So I kind of said that to them or whatever. They said that it could just be kind of two animations uh, colliding or whatever. But, um, you know, I'm expecting things like that to be they ironed did, out. They did, like say I was... that, they did say that they're still working on the goalkeepers though, didn't they? So... Yeah, well they did, yeah. They said that they were working out the goalkeepers, the visuals were getting an upgrade. I mean, we, we obviously saw we saw a couple of things that weren't released or that we weren't allowed, you know. And it was, you know, pays at a later stage. like, And there was, there was definitely an upgrade there, you know what I mean? From what we were, you know. So there was a lot, there is, I mean, this what, this was like a three or four week old build, I think, wasn't it? So yeah, yeah, they're after having an extra yeah. month and then we're going to have an extra what, maybe two? you know, July, August, September, nearly three months before it needs to actually be out. And then obviously, you know, there's going to be patches along the, you know, the year as well. So, um, I mean, I'm happy with it. Like, as I said, I'm happy. I thought that the keepers were solid. I thought that they made a couple of mistakes. Um, but again, like there was, there was no, you know, there's a massive step up from PES 16 and PES 16s weren't even that bad. I thought, uh, it was just that there was no real variation between having, you know, a 76 rated goalkeeper or Manuel Neuer because they'd both let in the same shots. Um, I thought the R2 finesse shots, you know, down low, they're pr pretty much kind of gone. Like, I tried about, I'd say about five or six one-on-ones um, just testing with Seppo, like, and they got down. You know, he was parrying it out. Um, 
one thing I think that they completely fixed, and it's definitely from feedback, is that I only saw, I'd say, about 10% of shots be, like, parried back into the box for a follow-up rebound or whatever. You know, they seem to kind of push it out over the line. They don't push it out over the goals, though. That's the one thing I'd like to see them do every now and again. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember what you're saying. They were parrying it mostly wide, not over the top. And, yeah, you yeah. are right. Like, um, I did see a big decrease in terms of how many of them were getting parried into dangerous areas for someone to tap into. It still happens. Just like in reality, it still happens. But it was a massive like decrease compared to PES 16 where it almost felt like every single parry was going to an attacker. This was far from yeah. that. This was massively far from that. Are you there? I'm here, yeah, man. Sorry, go on. Okay. Sorry, no, I thought, uh, you, were, I no, thought no, no, you were still no, no. talking. No, that was it. No, no, <laughs> no. Um, no, the only other thing I was going to say, which I don't really want to move on, well, if, unless you want to move on from this, was the only other thing that I had a bit of a problem with was stamina and I did say it in front of everyone there as well where I thought players, yeah, I, remember I, that. I think I didn't I don't think I mentioned this in my video but I think the stamina players were getting too tired for the 60th minute for a style that I was even playing like I wasn't playing an aggressive style where they would um, you know press forward a lot or anything I'd sit deep and somehow my attackers especially my attackers some midfielders like wingers they were getting tired more than anyone but I don't know if it was programmed for them players to get tired in that position because my yeah. centre backs didn't seem to get tired, but everyone else seemed to get tired, and um, I wasn't even like I was penned in my half for like one whole half, and I was still like almost drained by the 60th minute. So I'm thinking I've barely pushed forward, and my players are like knackered already. I don't know why this yeah. happened. So I, I just I think the stamina. And I did say that look, you know I think they need to be at least going. These are professional athletes here. They should be going to at least 70 to 75 minutes. Because in reality, when we see players play. You can see players getting gassed after the 80th minute. Unless they're not matching, yeah. that's something different. But, you know, you, I, th I think they do need to increase that stamina issue. I don't know if they've got the stamina like this for um, my club purposes, so people have to buy coins or something, but it's not something I really want to see. So I, I yeah. want to see better stamina, to be honest. Yeah, well, they should be, as you say, 80 minutes, and then it should start dropping, you know, dramatically. Like, you should be able to get to 80 minutes still kind of running around and stuff and then maybe drop off dramatically that, you know, you're, if the last 5, 10 minutes if you're still going to be chasing around, you know? Because you don't see that in real life. You don't see people just literally collapsing on the field after, you know, 65, 70 minutes when they've got no stamina left, you know? Um, that No, that definitely was, that definitely was a, a good point that you made over there, to be honest. Um, but I suppose I didn't really... I don't know, I didn't really kind of think about it too much, but I, I kind of looking back on it, yeah, I think it was a good point that you did make. Um, it depends with, like, there's a few things that could happen. I mean, I think the pace, as I keep going back to it, the pace of the game from when you actually pass a ball to receiving a ball to actually turning and, and deciding what you're going to do with it, I think that's absolutely perfect. I wouldn't like them to touch that. Um, the shooting, I kind of agree with you on the shooting that it's a little bit like fast through the animation um i heard that you were talking about that in your video obviously um but then i think the only thing that i would like to see fixed is to kind of have just a little more kind of burst of pace from the defenders when they get caught out because a lot of the time with the defenders i mean i think it was one friend i think he was fucking he was you just couldn't get past him he was so fast um you know, a Walcott even he could keep he could kind of keep up with Walcott once he got in close to him. But like, there's still that little bit of speed there that if Walcott or Sanchez or Rice gets a bit of you know gets a yard of space, you're kind of gone. You know, um, but I would like to see that the defenders kind of like are quicker in deciding where to go with the ball or when they don't have the ball. As in, when you're not controlling them, like when you're controlling them, it's perfect. I would say that, I think I said in my article that. I thought the defenders looked about 50% quicker, as in, when you had control of them, it didn't feel like you were wrestling with the manu... You know, it didn't feel like you were wrestling with the gamepad to, like, put them back in position. I think they kind of knew where to go. Um, but I did say it that the AI sometimes were reluctant to get back into positions to cover you when you weren't controlling them. Did you did you find that, or was it just kind of me looking too far, far into it? I don't know. Um... I think that has more to do with... I know what you're saying, that, you know, sometimes you're thinking, look, the danger's there, why are you not going to it? But I think that could be to do with the style of play, the way that you're set up or something. I don't know. I didn't really have too much of an issue with that, to be honest. So, I don't know. I, maybe you might have been looking into it more than me. I was, 
I was trying to test the game in a more natural way. I was like, let's just play, see how the casual user would pick up the game and play and see what they yeah. would struggle with it first. And then I'll start to dive into the tactics. And to be honest, I didn't really have that much of an issue with that. So I don't know, maybe you looked into it more than I did for that one. Yeah, maybe it was, as I said, maybe we just, we obviously have different opinions on what we're looking for. So it was, it was kind of good in that way, you know? Um, the thing with the shooting is though, like when, when I mentioned it in my video was, I said it looked fast and like, from the rest of the game I think it just looked at a different level of pace or whatnot but it didn't really ruin the game because the goalkeepers were able to deal with them it just didn't flow with the rest of the game naturally it felt like it was it felt like PES 16 pace for that one moment whenever you shot certain shots yeah. not all the time but it wasn't like yeah, a that's game a good shout because, actually because if, if it was like I think it was PES 12 or 13 like the shots were stupidly fast but the goalkeepers yeah. would react so slow to them that it never gave them a chance. This wasn't like that. They just looked fast. It didn't. It didn't mean the goalkeepers couldn't handle them because I think they handled them pretty nicely. But I'm just saying how well everything else looked and gelled nicely. Like the first touches were at the right pace for a defender to be able to get in there and match the pace of the pass and things like that. That all looked natural. But as soon as the shot was taken with some real power, it seemed like suddenly that right foot or left foot was like on ecstasy and it suddenly just got a power boost and things like that but the goalkeepers were able to handle them so it yeah. wasn't like it was a game breaker or anything it's just I'm just talking as an aesthetic view like it just didn't look right not that it broke yeah. the game or anything it just didn't it just didn't look right yeah well there was a, yeah there was a, that's the thing there was a couple of things and I I said that as well and I passed it on to Adam I said that it's kind of a little annoying that you can still you know like play like kind of Beckham-esque passes with Murta's accurate and stuff like not obviously not as accurate or not as you know, it takes a little extra to control it with the player, which is a nice little touch. So if you pass a, you know, 40, 50 yard switch ball from, say, Mertesacker to your left midfielder, like up to Sanchez, like it takes Sanchez a little second because Mertesacker is after passing it, which is a cool little feature um, that they didn't really talk about. But I saw it, you know, compared to if he's collecting a ball off Ozil or Ramsey or whoever. Um, but it like, it's just, as you say, it's not, it doesn't have like, it doesn't have an advantage to it like it does in PES 16. It kind of, it just, it's from a, you know, an aesthetic kind of like the look wise of it. That's the only thing. It's the same with the passings going in a straight line. It doesn't have an advantage that it goes in a straight line. It's just kind of a design choice that the team have obviously made. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, um, I, I was going to say with that, like, um, I didn't really have too many people try that, like, Mertesacker moment with passing it out wide because they realized pretty quickly that, listen, if you're going to want to do a special pass, or, well I'm not saying that was a special pass but if you want to do a more difficult pass and want to actually progress up the field you're going to do it with a player that's actually got a good passing start where if you yeah. tried using Coquelin or Mertesacker Kshallin, anyone like that and you tried playing a forward pass you knew you was giving your attacker a bit of work to do extra bit of work to do because they're going to have to control it and then take it around where someone like Ozil's pass would already get you into the attacking mindset before you can get your first touch because it was just the correct rate of pass to spin all that sort of stuff was just like perfect from Ozil where if you did it with Coquelin you knew that even though you might it might be going in your general direction you were going to have to work that bit harder to get your attack going further forward so like mm. running onto the ball you'd have to like bring it down a bit or slow the ball down just so you can get it under control and then shoot off again where with Ozil yeah. if he played the pass you could almost sprint onto it without breaking your stride so I think that alone was because people picked up on that um, it force people to play in a more realistic way as well so if if my club holds on to that sort of um, policy then I just can't wait to get to have, uh, my club into PES 17 man absolutely mm. destroy some nubs mate absolutely yeah well, we're gonna you're gonna destroy like that's it like a good player is actually gonna be able to destroy people this year with the tactics and stuff because people will just pick it up and want to play it like PES 16 and that was very fucking pick up and play you know for noobs like it was and I, I kind of haven't played it in a long time you know what I mean because of it because it's kind of like you're losing to guys that just fucking don't want to play football they just want to win you know which is I know it's good to win but um, yeah I think PES 17 is going to be a good year um, think, do you want to end think, it there because yeah I was just going to say one last thing I think yeah yeah I'm not I'm not, I'm not sure you know I don't know if you heard this last part in my video where I said there could be a new system in my club where we get players that we want or something like that if we do get a system where we can get our players my club for me is going to be so different because right now I'm playing with the best players and 
because they're the only players I can actually find in these special agents, like the best ones only. But if it comes to PES 17 and we can actually get our own players, I'm going to have Italian squad builders, um, like Premier League, English squads, things like that. I'm going to have so many different combinations where people can play at different levels, uh, you know, like, you know, just say three star team, four star team, whatnot. And just uh, the combinations of how I can make my club so interesting on my channel. It's just going to be so fucking amazing. And yeah. Because I believe in my skill levels, I wouldn't even have to have someone like um, someone like Pogba. I know he's amazing, but I think yeah. I could beat someone who had Pogba if I had someone like... I'm not even taking the bit. If I had someone like Jordan Henderson, I feel like my skill level... Unless I'm playing someone like amazingly good like you or someone like that, I would feel like if I'm playing against a nub, I could play someone Hen like with Henderson and players like that and still beat them even if they had Ronaldo and whatnot because yeah. unless they are good like I said if they're a nub I think I'll dispatch them with anyone I have as long as they're not retards on the pitch but you get my point so that's why I'll be a lot more confident going into PES 17 if we have our own players available that we can pick and choose and I, I, I just feel like I can get so much more life out of my club now yeah oh there definitely will there definitely will right we'll end it there so because I'm, I'm I'm rushing away to catch a flight again um all right, man. Sure. Look, we'll talk to you later. Uh, thanks for coming on. Obviously, uh, we'll be back again with another one next week uh, if that suits. So, yeah. All right. All right. Thanks for having me on, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next time. Peace. Peace.